Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. Teresa and Brady. Huh. You know, I give them credit for them trying to set up the next generation if they're going to keep these teen actors on and give them more story and hopefully better than this because <laughs> I've seen more teen drama. I've seen better teen drama in Degrassi. Okay? But I give them the props because I know that they're trying. So you got Teresa that is just on one, okay? <clears throat> She's been on one for far too long. I get, and I, I sound like a broken record because at this point, it's just Teresa on one every single day. The constant bitchy attitude when it comes towards Holly. Not to mention that she is not lying to two other people just to get what she wants and and to keep out of trouble. She hurt Tate. Tate forgave her. At some point she needs to sit there and 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 she could be cordial at the very least. She doesn't have to sit there and act like she's the devil and she's getting them hooked on pills. Or, there was one point where they're sitting there trying to find them because, you know, Tate acts like he has a headache and Holly goes to use the restroom and they go and try to find them. And after talking to Leo and Leo just lies to them, which both of them don't believe Leo, she's like, well, maybe, maybe, you know, she's getting them hooked on something. I'm just like... Teresa, really? Like, part of me is just like, how long do we have to sit there and deal with the bitchy attitude? And by the way, they wound up going to the Salem Hotel and just kind of hanging out, dancing, and just having a good time. So, they're able to get the key card because eventually, you know, Brady's like, yeah, you know, he's a teenager, he wants to sit there and be with his girl or whatever, and, you know, privacy time. And looks at the hotel, he's like, yeah, I know exactly where they are. And they, they open the door, and she's like, aha. And I'm just like, okay, you found them. Now what? Well, <laughs> what are you going to do now at this point? Like, it, it's just, it, at, at a point, I, I just, I started looking at my phone, because that's how disinterested I am. And at this, at this whole story and the way she's acting, it's just, lady, no, no one cares at this point. Like I said yesterday and the day before, I am counting down the days that I don't have to sit there and see Teresa anymore. You know the sad part is that I still would have been, ups I still would have been annoyed, even if it was Jennifer Lilly playing it. Because I'm just kind of over it at this point. Um, Alex. I feel like they are doing everything that they can to make him so unlikable. So after he talks to um, Leo and Leo shares that he's going to be confronting his mother soon. That they both are seeing the same therapist. And the conversation is pretty cordial, given their history. He goes back, and he talks to Justin. And, you know, Justin's like, you know, I was worried about you and everything like that. I'm glad you're okay. And, um, you know, Alex is like, you know, that experience made me realize that, I, you know, that, that um, Teresa could possibly be the one. Justin tells him about some old news about, you know, at one point, you know, Brady and Teresa hooked up. And he's like, well, you know, I hooked up with Kristen, so we're kind of even at this point. Um, so we're just starting to know. Now, Justin pretty much warns him, you know, listen, those two have history. They're close. They share a son together. You know, long story short, 
he doesn't want Alex to sit there and get hurt, right? Now, he does speak out of turn and says, you know, as a father, yada, 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 because, you know, he's been used to calling him his son damn near his whole life. And Alex decides to act like a dick, and it's like, you're not my father. And even if you were, it's none of your business, which, okay, fine. It isn't his business. But you're getting this attitude and you can clearly see that he's just coming from a place of concern and love. So he's like, okay, you know what? You're right. And he walks off. And then Alex talks to Victor's painting, talking about all the attributes that he has is because of Victor. He has no idea that none of that is true. And the sad part is that when he finds out, I don't know how much I'm actually going to sit there and have sympathy for him. Because it's, ever since that he had money, got that type of money, that type of title, he has been doing nothing but acting like an entitled dick to Maggie, to Justin, and damn near almost everyone else. His, his whole personality just changed. When he first came on the show, he was fun, he was interesting. He's still more fun and interesting than Ben, but he's also just a dick, an unlikable dick. Well, to be honest, I don't think he can actually be a likable dick, but my point is he just comes across as unlikable. Um, you know, Sophia confronted Harley and was like, hey, listen, I know that you're going to be, you know, when Tate left, he's like, aren't you going to go after him? I know about the whole thing. I heard about everything. And, you know, she was pretty pissed off. And, you know, Howley's like, yeah, I'm sorry that this happened, yada, yada, yada. I hope you forgive me. And, you know, I didn't mean to hurt you. Whenever people sit there and say, I'm sorry, I hope you're going to be okay. What can I do to fix this? It just comes across as annoying. She does sit there and say she's not going to say anything. And Aaron does kind of confess his feelings to her afterwards. Um, so she's not, and she's still angry and kind of hurt. But, you know, she... Uh, I guess likes the fact that he confessed his feelings towards her because, you know, he didn't know. I mean, she didn't know. And maybe on some level she can kind of sympathize. You know, she liking Tate, him liking her, and not even really noticing that person. Um, what the hell was the last part? And while Kayla and Roma talking, Ava comes back, and Ava's like, because she's been gone for, like, over a week. Roma's like, you know, where have you been at? He was like, oh, she was like, oh, I went to China. I was like, you couldn't, because she went to China to sit there and tell Wendy and Trev about Clyde being locked up. And I'm just like, and a phone call wouldn't do? You do realize that you are still working for Rome, who is, you know, your relationship is tenuous at best. You decide to, oh, I'm just going to hop over to China for a little bit. But, um, um, Kayla and, and Ava get to talking. Long story short, Ava, Kayla's like, what are you still doing here? No one here in Salem, you know, you don't really have a connection to anyone in Salem anymore. Trip is gone. Like, Harris, you know, well, she doesn't sit there and say anything about Harris, but she's like, Trip is gone. There's really no reason for you to be here. And long story short, Kinda has a point, um, because after after she left, Rome was like Harris hasn't gotten back yet, so Harris isn't back, Trip isn't back. There really is no reason for you to actually still to actually be there. But she goes to the room, and towards the end of the episode, Harris is there. Um, now Justin comes to sit there and see Steve because Steve is like, well, Kayla sent him because she knew that he was going to need a lawyer. Steve com And Steve confessed to him about the break, the um, breaking Clyde out, but saying he was the only person that did it. Now, Justin's like, I could try to get you a deal. I don't know how good that deal's going to be when the truth comes out. And, you know, John is implicated. Ava's implicated. What, what good is that going to do? You know, I understood that he didn't want to wait for the shooter drop, and Kayla was like, 
Well, Kayla was like, I understand why you protected John, but she was like, I don't know why you did Abel. Like, and she realized, you know, they said her son. The problem is, I think she should have probably came down more on him for the fact that this deal can go through. And then the minute that they find out that John and Ava has something to do with it, it's done. You know? So if you're going to sit there and confess, you should have confessed to the whole thing. Unfortunately, yeah, he, he should have probably been like, hey, listen, John, I got to sit there and tell our parts because, you know, I'm going to get this all out the way. Because in all reality, he could sit there and be hanging out, being sitting there pretty, and then Clark would be like, yeah, I know about your deal. And I know you didn't sit there and tell, you know, you didn't sit there and tell on John and Ava. So how good do you think that deal's going to do when I start sitting there singing like a canary? So, yeah. Now, I've been wondering when is Harris's last day. I've been wondering that for a hot minute. Um... I thought he just was just going to not come back and just be like, oh, okay, cool. I'm just not going to come back. There's no reality. What is his reason to sit there and stay other than Ava? And his relationship with Ava is tenuous at best. Like, I don't see that actually working out. I, I think there's only so many lies and so much stuff you could sit there and put somebody through, especially a man. Um, our patience is... <laughs> Is 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 not infinite. It's not, and the fact that he already forgave her for the whole sleeping with 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 Stefan, yeah. So, and breaking Clyde out. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's about it. That's the major talking points anyway. I might have forgot one or two things, but I think that's the gist of it. If I missed anything, write in the comment section below. Or better yet, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk about all the shows, Days of Our Lives, Bowen the Beautiful, Young and Restless, and General Hospital. I'll see you in the next video.